Hello, this is Lee, and I'm back again with another lesson. So, as you can see, uh, for today's drawing, we're going to be doing a sea serpent. So, just like uh, our previous lesson with the chibi wolf, this one is going to be in full color, along with a kind of a detailed background. So, I'm just going to show you, as um, usual, that I have my... Um, so this is like pretty much the ink to look, so it has all the details put together along with the background. And here I have my wireframe for the sea serpent. So these are the simple shapes that I have made to kind of create the fins, the body, and mouth. So I'll be helping you guys today on uh, creating your sea serpent. So um, if you notice, the canvas is a little different. I'm going to, it's set at a portrait, so make sure that your paper is standing tall, I believe how kids call it, it's more like a, a hot dog. So, um, let's see, just making sure, okay, so I got gray and black, gray and black, gotta make sure I got the right pencil. So, um, make sure your paper is set as so, and I want you to start drawing out some guidelines. Just kind of like this, this cross, nice and light. And I want to help you guys indicate that with the gray color, this is more for sketching, because um, I'm doing digital. But for those of you who are doing traditional with piece of paper and pencil, make sure to draw these very lightly. So the very first thing that I'm going to draw is an oval for our uh, sea serpent head. And then for the body, so this is kind of like an action line, because uh, funnily enough, when I do serpent-like creatures, I do like an S, like this. So I'm going to add a little extra curve, like this here. So make sure that you have your line looking like this. And you can change the curviness if you want to, because the nice thing about the sea serpent, he's literally like a snake. So you could always adjust the pattern however way you want. Um, the only thing is, is just knowing where his underbelly would be, along with you know his little spine spikes and fins. So uh, other than that, we're gonna start shaping his body. So with this line here, we're gonna actually use this to help shape that snake-like body. So for my circle, I'm just doing this. Following the flow of my line, and so it's creating that serpent like shape. And if you notice, I'm kind of doing sort of a fat serpent, not too fat, not like he's eating a fresh a rat or something, or a bunch of fish because this is a sea serpent. But as you can see, I'm just making him a little thick, just snakes. Any sort of serpent, they have like a kind of a thick body. Don't want to do super thin because then uh, it'll be a little rough to make the underbelly, and you know, we don't want a flimsy looking sea serpent. But if you notice here at the tail, kind of just becomes thinner and like a tip here. And as you can see, I am erasing my middle line, so make sure to erase that, because we won't need that anymore. That's so important. And make sure to you erase your dashed lines too, because we don't need those anymore. So go ahead and erase that. So right now, you just did a snake, and yes, S for snake is a little, just a little slight curve here, because hey, that, that gives a, a nice touch to kind of keep away from the, our serpent shaping to a little S. But there's no wrong of doing it like that, but to me, I just want to make my sea serpent look like he is literally swimming in the water. So that little wave here, because that's how snakes kind of swim in the water too. Or Mario, um, 
her body is moving. So, so uh, next thing to do is we're gonna be drawing out our little fins. So you can go many ways you want. Uh, I did like the little tall big fins. So I'm doing these little spine parts kind of going out. And if you notice, these two are longer and this one's a little shorter. So I just want to make it look like uh, he kind of has sort of a mohawk design going on. So that'll be a nice touch. They don't have to be equal length. They can be longer, they can be shorter. But, you know, the, you can do whatever sort of custom fin look you want. And uh, since I'm doing that, I'm just going to add like a little, kind of has a dorsal fin. And another here. Just kind of more of a fish. So the, another thing about sea serpents is that they're more of the mystical side. So um, you can do any sort of shapes you want. You can go with more of a fishy look, or you could go more like he's got spikes going on. But I'm going to go with more fishy look because I feel that's more appropriate for um, the climate that he's in. Because he's underwater and he is a sea serpent, so I think he's got to look like a fish in some way or the other. So um, I pretty much have my points, and if you notice, I made my lines here for the tail fin. So I'm going to show you here with the tail fin that uh, I basically kind of shape it out so it kind of pinches here at this tip. So think of almost like a mermaid or a little fish. But if you want to do a whale tail or any of that, you can do that too. I'll, I'll show you a little quick example of what a whale tail would be. And right here, I'm just kind of doing more of a fish tail. So if you notice, um, it kind of looks like a leaf. You can keep these two lines, the middle lines here, for like maybe an extra detail, or you can just erase them completely like how I did with the example. But um, if you ever want to do a whale tail, so make sure to watch this carefully. So I'm kind of just outlining this, so maybe this would be a good way, but like whale tail would be more like this. So that's kind of a thick whale tail. But whale tails are more like this. So they kind of have that little splasher there. It's like a wide thin and then a little, almost like a roundish W in the middle. So you could do something like that. I know this one's a little too fat compared to a much better example of a whale tail, but you can, you can go that route too. And whales are more sea mammals, but hey, this is a sea serpent, so he could have that sort of look for him. But I'm keeping the fish look because that's what I'm going for. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw the membrane of my first uh, dorsal fin here. So think of almost like an umbrella. Each of these points kind of go in. Like a kind of like a bottom of an oval, it just kind of curves and then curves down and curves back up to our point. And from here, I'm just curving downwards back to the body. You don't have to do these side membrane parts, I just did it because I thought I felt that I should have those, but um, that's totally up to you. I'm just gonna do this opening here. And like I said before, this is more of a mohawk kind of look. So if you notice, um, I didn't do an extra membrane on this side on the top of his head because that's not needed. So just like I do with this tail fin, um, if you want to leave these middle lines, you can. And for these lines here, this could still work as for this mine. You could leave it just like that. Or like an example, you can kind of thicken them up like this. It's just a little thick. 
Make sure the tips are pinched because that is a nice touch. And I mean, there's no wrong if they are not pinched at the tips, that's totally fine. Maybe they have super strong spine spikes that protects them. And there's the membrane kind of helps them out swimming in the water. The um, those are their back fins and tail fins. So the next thing I'm going to show you is, you know, their little fin arms. I just thought that would be a nice addition for them to have. Um, so before I get to that, I'm going to draw the underbelly. And this one you'll have to keep a really good eye on, that the underbelly here. So I'm kind of starting somewhere at the middle of my oval here, and I'm coming down. Because we want to make this sea serpent look like he is he's curving and swimming. So my lines are kind of shaping out like this. So you can see like we're right here on this side it's pinching because we don't see that side of his body. And see we're right here, we don't see that side. We're seeing mostly of his underbelly in this view. And of course, as I reach the bottom, you know, the base of his tail, I just decided that it kind of shorts out from here. I'm just kind of fixing up here and there. And we have our underbelly. So now, another thing to keep in mind, because we did draw the underbelly, you could keep it smooth as this. Like this is another color. And then the one on top is the other. But we want to make sure that you don't accidentally uh, mess up when coloring the wrong side, given that our back fins here help indicate that this is where the scales are. And then this here, where the fins are not on, are uh, the underbelly. So just keep in mind on that. But I want to help myself know where the underbelly is. I'm drawing like these round lines like this. The reason why I'm doing round lines is to indicate that my serpent is not a flat piece of paper. He has 3D shape and it does help out his uh, his movement and swimming in the water. So that'll be a good detail to add. You could do a smooth line like this or you could do like zigzags if you want or you know funny pattern like this, but it's still going in that direction. So like if you did that kind of cog-like pattern, it would probably look like this. Or maybe if you wanted to scale, so it would have to look like that. Same with three joint spikes. So it's still a different shape, not a smooth line, but it's still kind of curving like that. So just keep in mind with your patterns. Though I'd say if you were doing this, this is probably better for a, a scale sort of pattern. Like if you're doing something like um, like an Asian lung, or as what others say, like a Chinese dragon or a Japanese dragon, like that'll be good for like a scale detail. If you have the patience to do that. But I'm just gonna erase those because those are not the intended designs I'm going for. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start drawing my fins. So in this space here, I'm just going to clean up a little bit. I'm going to do kind of like a little, it's like a V, just a tiny V here. And I'm going to draw a line going out like this, a line going out like that, a line going here. And I hope you guys are drawing very lightly because this is probably going to be a little tricky to see. So I'm just going to show you with a, a darker uh, color. So I just did my V again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to thicken up these points here to make, to make my little thin hearts. So it's like the little fingers. And what I'm going to do in the membrane, so it look like that. Now for our other fin that's showing, it's just kind of poking out like this. 
But if you want to like repeat this one but kind of facing the other way, you're more than welcome to do that. I'm just gonna keep my Vanessa to the original design. So um, now that we have our body, and I want to make sure that you guys uh, have all this detail. If you need to pause just for a moment before we proceed, please do that. But I'm gonna start getting straight to the head. So I'm gonna be zooming in. So now for the head, uh, you can go various ways with the face because I went with kind of a dinosaur sort of look with my sea serpent, but you can do like a regular fish face or a shark or a cat, dog, whatever you want because sea serpents are fantasy based creatures. But um, what I'm doing for the draw is I'm kind of, oops, let me get this gray. Uh, I am doing a Kind of like a beak. This is my beak here. And I'm going to do another beak. Kind of meeting up. Why did I do a beak? I don't know. I just thought that it was a nice little addition. If you think about it, I mean dinosaurs did. I mean, birds. I meant birds. Birds have descended from dinosaurs. Except they're not giant. And scary and probably eat everything, but uh, we don't have that anymore. So I'm going to show you here from our mouse. So like this mouse is pretty small, and I did a big gaping mouse like a dinosaur would have. So from this end of the mouse, I did. Oop! Why am I doing that? I did a line like this. So it looks like a frown. And then this draw is kind of going up. So if you can't see, I'm just going to clean this up for you guys. So this mouse will look like this. It looks like a gaping draw. And if you notice, I have some of my oval here, so I'm going to erase that. And please do erase those unneeded lines just to make sure that you have your uh, head shaped the way you want. And from there we have a mouse. My big, big doll clampy mouse. And what I'm gonna add now, I'm going back with the black again, I didn't mean that, I meant with the gray. Uh, so <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw the membrane part of their jaw. So like it can stretch super wide so you can do that, and uh, I'm going to add the teeth. So I did dinosaur teeth, or like alligator, so it's kind of like a, it's a round V. So it's not, not this, it's more this, this shape. You can do a pointy V if you want to, or you can do various sharp teeth, you, whatever kind you want. Or you can do human teeth, which I mean, that's kind of weird and scary. I wouldn't want to deal with a sea serpent with human teeth. That's, that's a nightmare. I'm just going to say he stole someone's dentures that fell in the ocean. But you could do whichever um, kind of teeth you want. So I'm just going to do my regular dinosaur teeth because I love dinosaur teeth. They're just really fun to draw. And I did about six of them. Now, I'm not going to tell you you should just only do six. If you want to do a million tiny sharp teeth, go for it. And if you don't want the membrane included, you just want more teeth, then go for it. I'm not going to stop you. It's a sea serpent. But since I got my teeth, I'm going to draw my tongue. And I just did a little long tongue hanging out because literally it's just wiggling out like this. And I did a smooth round tongue. Now you could do a fork tongue, like something like this. Or you could do, I don't know, it's a snake tongue, which that's kind of weird. But you can totally go for it. So it's just, you got your sea serpent and then a snake tongue. Well, it's a snake and then it's another mouth and then you do it a fork tongue and that's like a T. 
tongue suction sort of deal. You could do that if you want. But I'm just going to do regular tongue because that's just what I'm sticking to. But the next thing, so I'm just going to add a little guideline here. And uh, here's another thing with eyes. So you can place them however way you want. If you want the eyes like here, you can. Though that's typically where I would put the nostril. Uh, they could be here if you want, or you know, where I'm originally going to put here. So that's another thing. You can choose where you want your eyes to be. But I'm just going with the typical, this is where the eyes would be. So I'm just going to erase those. And so that's the placement for my eye. And I'm going to just do a little line here for the nostril. You can do kind of like a comma for a nostril like that, or you could do you know, an oval, a small circle, a line, a dog nose. Oops, that's I mean, that white line with my pen doing it. You could do a dog nose. There's no wrong with adding animal noses. Don't do a human nose though, that's, that's weird. Unless you want to. But, uh, we basically got our layout of our sea serpent. So this is like the whole body, but I'm going to show you some extra little details that's best to add. Because if you notice, this is my sketch. I'm not going to like use this for inks yet. But I'm going to show you on the face, I'm adding in little additions with my black pencil here. Just dark lining a certain area. So I did a little bump. And I did another bump here. So I'm going to show you where I'm just kind of drawing my jaw and teeth. Just going to do this real quick. So if you notice, I kind of, because my lines are a little thicker, so I'm going with like a fine line pen or pencil, I mean. And I'm shaping out my head. So I add a little jaw here, like a this jaw is a little wider. But the fun thing about fish is, because there is fishes that have like a jaw like this, you could just keep with that shape. Or if you want to make them look a little bit more dino, dino-y, um, you can do that. So I'm just doing little little details. I'm doing a little bump for his nostril. And his tongue, gotta do the tongue. Another important thing, this may rarely show, but I did do an extra line here to show this membrane. Now I'm just going to add some hatch lines here for the shading. You don't have to do that, but I'm just showing you here. On the other side, it would be darker because um, if we color this the same color as this side here, we might think that it's matching up to this. So we want to make sure that this is the other side and that should be darker. So now, um, other than that, um, like an example, I did like the, these little lines here, which is optional. You do not have to do that. If I, if you drew those lines, you're just like, ah, that doesn't work. You could get rid of those lines. You don't have to. I put them in because I feel that it works for my sea serpent. It's just a nice little touch. But um, with the eye, so I'm just going to do a simple round eye and kind of pinch the sides of my oval here. So kind of imagine a lemon that's trying to be a lemon, except, you know, it's, it doesn't look like this because that's how you draw a lemon. Now I'm going to just have this lemon stare at you while I draw my uh, sea serpent eye. So, uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll erase it in a bit. But I, not the eye, I meant the lemon. But anyways, I am going to draw a circle for the iris. And then I did a kind of a slit pupil, like a cap. And the thing is, is that I didn't do a shine mark. Um, you could do a shine mark if you want to. I'm going with the more fish eye look. Kind of wild and feral sort of deal, and I feel that it suits real nicely for my sea serpent. So that's an option for you. 
and uh, I'm just gonna shape out his head just a little more here maybe just raise up his little little head here that was not me that was my dog Mia she's chilling with me as I teach you guys how to draw a sea serpent at least she's not being too nosy so well you know that's not me it's my dog but uh, anyways that's pretty much my head and if you want to add like horns or something, you are more than welcome to do that. I'm just, if you want to know how to do a horn, um, so because this is a side view, it's not going to matter. So I'm going to do kind of a curvy horn. Then I'm going to do kind of a line going like this. And I'm going to come back down with my pencil. Just do that. Because the nice thing about side profile is um, you don't really have to totally worry about the depth of it unless you're doing a certain kind of detail. So like, uh, let's just say if I wanted to do a pattern like this, then yes, I would probably have to do it like that. So I'm kind of not doing a round, I'm doing more of a V pattern. And his horns pretty much above his nosies, between his nostrils. So it's going to look like that. But if you want to do a little extra and kind of make his horn a little bit seem like it's part of his body, you can do it like that. So I'm just going to... So it kind of looks like that. You don't have to do a horn like how I did mine. So this is just an example of uh, customizing certain things with uh, um, your sea serpent. So now another thing which I pointed out with uh, when I was doing the underbelly with you guys is uh, scales. So scales are pretty important, especially for the sea serpent because he's got like fish-like scales. I mean, come on, he looks more like a fish with all these fins going on. So. Um, if you're doing a whale like an anime, then I think this isn't really appropriate. But again, it probably wouldn't matter because it's a made-up creature. So if it has scales, it let it have scales. But uh, how I do my scales, so if you notice, I did like a W and a U. You can do little specks of Ws and Us here and there. It doesn't have to be too perfect. They're just little specks. It's just hints of detail with um, this texture of the skin. So I'm just doing that here and there. Do a little bit more. And sometimes I just do specks of lines because I mean. It's just hints, especially with the distance of his body being viewed, you won't really see full detail of his scales. But as you can see, this is my uh, sketch <clears throat> sketch uh, of my sea serpent. So from there, we're going to uh, do a background. So I'm just going to show you real quick right here with this guy. My example, he's got, you know, some rocks, seaweed, fish, and little mini crabs just chilling. Along with some um, mountains in the back and water. So you could totally do something like that. I mean, this is a sea serpent, so we gotta put him in a background where he's underwater. So, um... With my sea serpent, because this is still a sketch, I'm going to sketch out some, some rocks. And I do want you guys to draw this lightly. So, I just did some bumpy rocks here. Actually, it's a little too bumpy there. And if you want, you could give it some space. You don't have to have it hugging at him. Um, you could do some rocky mountains here and there, like this. It doesn't matter what the shape has to be, because the nice thing underwater is that they're kind of smooth, but rocky and bumpy like so. Um, you can add other things than just seaweed and crabs and fish. You can add little 
sea urchins or uh, sea anemone or if you want to be extra add a um, sunken ship in the background and if you want to add like your own character that's swimming and about to fight this uh, sea serpent you can do that too I mean you decide the the setting the background for your sea serpent and I mean some say that the space is like the ocean so he could totally be swimming in space if he wants to or in the sky so it doesn't have to be undersea if you want but mine's a sea serpent i say he's on the water so i did my bumpy rocks and i did sketch out some wavy lines here kind of like a indication that this is the water these are not like clouds, but in some way they can be. So I don't think there's any clouds that be that thin as that. And I did do some lines here. Mm, a little here. I wouldn't overwhelm you with uh, a bunch of um, wavy lines, so just you know keep at a minimum. Um, this will also help you if you're doing traditional. Um, you can mix up with so different colors if you want. Like you can do different colors of blues, purples, greens, kind of waving in the back. Kind of like a rainbow almost. So if that would help. Uh, just in case if your marker doesn't die on you and run out of ink. So that's always like a helper with that. But um, I'm going to go back to my... My two rocks here at the corner of my paper and I'm just gonna draw some seaweed so the nice thing about the seaweed it's curvy just like our sea serpent and it varies so, so you just draw a wavy line and then you pinch wavy line and pinch again and that's your seaweed so you just do a wavy line pinch wave and pinch so you can just do some seaweed. I'm just gonna do a few more over here. And they can be super wavy, super fat, or thin. I mean, I'm sure you guys seen plenty of seaweed when you go to the beach that's washed up, or if you were cool enough to scuba dive, I'm sure you've seen plenty of that too. But um, I don't scuba dive, I am oddly allergic to the ocean. I know that's kind of weird, but there's something in the ocean that makes me react really weird. And I, uh, I get red and kind of itchy and puffy and I'm just like, oh no. But, uh, you can ignore that. But I'm adding in some little texture lines. They're just like little zigzags. Some little, little line specks just here and there. Just creating my rock. You have your rocks there. And if you want to see urchin, so if any of you watch SpongeBob, I know they do little sea urchins kind of like like this. They kind of look like a bug almost. You can definitely do that, or you could just do, you know, it's just like a little fuzzy, fuzzy ball. Think of like the uh, asterisk or when you're trying to make that star with a bunch of lines kind of crisscrossing together. But literally sea urchin is kind of like that. Now I'm doing a bunch of sea urchins because they're a little too much fun to, to draw. So I'm just going to stop there. Okay, do this another one. No, I'm going to stop. So, um... Another thing is because he's in undersea, so I didn't want to make him look lonely. Maybe he's hungry. He's got to eat some fish somewhere. So I added some fish in the background. And I didn't have him have them uh, too up close. Kind of had him out in the distance. And I just did a simple, so it's kind of like a, a stretch C like this. And then I did a little tail fin like that. And I just kind of repeat that, and some of them are a little derpy looking. 
which is totally fine. And I also try to vary, try to make uh, some different kinds of fish. So, um, I make like this little fish. So they're, they're kind of like, um, have a thicker dorsal fin and then a little underbelly fin. I'm sorry, I don't know what kind of fish is that because I'm not super smart with my fish knowledge other than sharks. But, um, I mean, sharks, you can add that too. I just did like these little fishies. Because they're simple, they're not really much the huge focus, but they're good for the background. So just simple shapes like that. And I'm just kind of spraying them out in empty areas to kind of make up like, hey, I don't want to just keep coloring that certain area that same color. I'm only doing this because this could help for people who are doing traditional piece. I know with digital, you could have a easier way with filling the areas. So just make sure we have something in the background, just to make it a little interesting and lively. I'm just gonna add another fish here and another here. So it's pretty much my sketched out uh, sea serpent with the background. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start inking I'm going to put up another layer for those of you who have um, fully sketched this out in pencil. Make sure that it's light and you grab a uh, fine point black pen or um, a sharpie. So for me, I'm just going to lower the opacity of my sketch layer. So I'm sure those who do digitally have a good way of doing this. But um, as for me, I'm just going to ink up my sea serpent. So I'm just going to do my G pen again. Kind of a small tip. And I'm just going to ink up most of those areas. So I want you guys to use a careful hand when you're inking your sea serpent. If you notice, uh, my lines are going kind of smooth and slow. Uh, when it comes to digital, I have this stabilization um, setting that helps me make sure my lines go a certain way. Because if it has met with my natural speed with how I ink, which I kind of do ink a little too fast, my lines will look a little messy. Because with how my tablet pen is cooperating with my uh, Stroke, stroke movements. But for those of you who do it traditionally, and you're doing like long lines like this, especially with the body, just make sure to take it nice and slow. Just take your time. I know that's probably asking too much, depending on the patients, but it'll look really great if you do that. I'm also a big fanatic of inking, so I like to take my time with it and I enjoy it so. And for those who have fancy pen sets, if you have like uh, what they call multi liners, please do use those for fine details like what I'm doing here for the horn. If you have like a, maybe a 3 or 2 or 1 or a 0.5, that would be really good to use for details. So, uh, sorry, I, I mumble when, I, in my ink, when I'm in my inking phase, but uh, I'm going to 
show you the inking of the whole body. So if you notice, I'm kind of rotating my paper. I'm going to rotate this way. So you can do that too if you're just drawing on regular paper. And this will really help. So please, please, please rotate your paper when you're inking along lines like this. Just ink on the lines. So, of course, you, you probably just realized like I am just undo that, and you're probably like, oh, yeah, okay, undo that, and you can put that in. So, uh, yeah, I'm a little too cheatful when it comes to that, but. Um, when you're inking on paper, this is why you have to take it slowly because I'm going a little too fast now. You just need to make sure to keep your lines steady and slow. Okay, you're drawing steady and slow. That doesn't make sense. Please ignore it. I meant the way that you draw steady and slow. Got my tail and the underbelly part. Mm. And just adjust this way. No, um, so if you notice, I kind of did that. Like, if your lines are kind of going out from how you want them. So with me, uh, I'm actually not doing a vector layer, so that's impossible, but I can erase that. For you guys, you could just kind of fix it up. So uh, keep this one. No, um, you could fix up kind of like this, kind of thicken the line more. Um, well, that's optional. If you have a white gel pen, you could easily just fix it up like that. But as you can see, I'm kind of messed up in some areas, so like this line should be moving up, but I'm going to be adjusting here with my pen. Kind of stretch it out a bit. So it's because um, sometimes your sketch may not really match up with your inks, because along the way you're thinking like, hmm, maybe I should have just did that instead of this. And that happens a lot with artists, even professionals like me. I think a little too much for me though, but um, your sketch is not going to exactly always look like um, like how your inks will be. They won't always match up because we ink a little differently than how we do with the sketch and we tend to make little adjustments here and there because we notice we take notice on some of those areas, like, oh, okay, maybe I should have done this instead of that. And that's totally fine. But if you want it exactly as it is, then, you know, make sure to have a careful hand on the ink. I'm just finishing up my pen, my dorsal pen. Sorry for the silence, I'm just very focused with uh, inking my lines, making sure that they're nice and steady. 
Yeah, this one too. I'm just carefully looking. Gotta make sure I get every little detail. So all those pencil details, and I'm hoping that. So if you notice where I'm inking, so I'm not inking up that portion of um, the jaw that I adjusted. So that will be erased. So keep that in mind if there's some areas you don't want to trace with your sharpie. Like don't don't sharpie that. Unless you want to. I'm just gonna quickly erase, I mean, not erase, uh, sketch out my scales. So another thing about the scales is that because um, I did a little bit messy on the, I guess the fixing I'm doing there. Just That's pretty much my sea serpent all inked up. Um, I'll be doing the same thing with my background here, so I know that's going to be a lot to do for you guys. Then traditionally, you have to ink up all those things in the background, but let you guys know all that that work, that effort is going to be a huge reward with um with doing that. Interestingly enough, I, I like to do backgrounds. I mean, I, I love drawing characters just as much, but there's something just about backgrounds is they're really fun to do. Because you're just kind of thinking like, oh, I'm gonna add this, I'm gonna add that. Even though it's just a simple rock or sea urchin or seaweed, I just think uh, it's it's pretty cool. It's more like a you can do like these kind of things too. And they're also very simple. I'm not asking for too much, especially with this kind of art style that I'm doing. Or that I typically do. Uh, one would ask, like, okay, would I, would I be doing more uh, backgrounds and characters? I mean, maybe. I don't know, there's something really common about doing backgrounds. I also like drawing characters, too. And it's also good practice, so if any of you wanting to do like a create your own video game or um, do your own story like a comic it's going to ask for all sorts of things uh, drawing characters um, drawing backgrounds and even little things like these fishes here in the back and ask for those kind of things and one would say like well there's comics that don't have much in the backgrounds. It's just one single color or, or shapes. I mean, you can do that too. But uh, story heavy based comics, so like manga or graphic novels or your typical um, superhero comic books, they're going to be asking for, for backgrounds. So we could say this is the first page of our sea serpent. And he lives under the sea in this um, rocky area. He's a bunch of fish. 
and the folks will say that okay well the next panel will be empty but we're focusing on the expression of our sea serpent and sometimes it could be like a blank blank white background or it could be a certain color with a splash of white and maybe your sea serpent is surprised or hungry or angry or kind of thing so comics do do that as well just more of um express the emotions the character is feeling so sometimes um in comics they'll have a full detailed background and uh, at times they they may not and that's totally okay but it's usually important in one of the panels or, or two of your page we gotta get the idea that um there is a place that these characters are in like if i was doing more panels with my sea monster that i would indicate okay there's these fish just swimming by or i'll do those simple little curved lines that i did for the indication of the water so i'll do that and now I, I just realized I forgot something that's very important, um, bubbles. So I'm just going to draw some bubbles here. I don't know why they're super light, but digital wise, I would do them with a white, white color. Now, if any of you have a white gel pen, this is perfect thing to add after coloring your um, sea serpent. But for me, uh, I, I'm just going to do black, just so you guys know where the bubbles are. So that's all of it all inked up, so I'm just going to be coloring my supposed areas and just, oops, paint fucking, paint bucketing, paint filling. I'm filling my sea urchins with black. So, if you notice, my front under my sketch is gone. But for those who are drawing on paper, make sure to erase that good. And if you have some of the pencils that are showing, then that's a key reminder for you that you need to make sure to draw lightly. Um, I know that's probably a little too hard. To do but just with more practice as you go as sketching um you you'll have like some clean looking inks like this for your sea serpent so um under the neck i'm going to start coloring my sea serpent and i'm just going to do uh i guess i'll just do a green one this time so i'm just going to have him green green is my favorite color, well, typically the rainbow is. I like all colors, but green is always a nice color to look at. So just carefully fill those those areas, and whatever white areas that you have. So if you notice some some of the spots that I filled have not fully colored so you gotta make sure you color those white areas and let's see uh, hmm. so I would do what should his underbelly color be I'll just pick this color he's gonna be going with the green factor Oops. And just as I told you guys to make sure to color those white areas, I just forgot to color that portion. Whoop. And that happens. That happens to all of us. But always double check. And I'm just doing the little... This can be like a fruit. I don't know what kind of fruit, a watermelon. Or something. And you don't have to do the same colors like I did. You can do whatever colors you want. I'm just picking these colors because 
I'm just some wood for that, I guess. I'm gonna give him yellow teeth. Yes, why not? Or yellow horn. I'm gonna give him. Let's see, how about we go with purple, purple eyes and blue sclera? Right now, how about? But yellow instead. Yeah, it looks a lot better. Now, if you notice, uh, the pupil of my sea serpent is left white, so you could do that. There's some art, various art styles out there that do that sort of thing, but uh, you do not have to do that. You can color it in black if you want to. So I got my sea serpent colored. And I'm going to start coloring up my background, just filling in my rocks. And if you notice, um, my next color here, so this is going to keep it. So I kind of did more of a grayish tone, I'm going to go a little lighter. Because it's far away, so we won't really much tell. I'm going to add more water. I'm going to go with a light blue or dark blue or, you know, kind of a green, greenish blue. It all depends. Maybe it's super dark, like he's in a dark cavern. But I'm just doing simple colors. Nothing too extravagant. And you don't have to do uh, realistic color tones, like how I'm doing here, you can go like purple rocks, blue rocks, I mean there, there are rocks in various different colors, so the power is yours for that. So I'm just going to do yellow fish, these guys are going to be yellow, and do some red fish. And I do try to kind of vary on the, the coloring of my fishies. So I'm not giving them too much detail because I don't want them to be so mainly focused compared to our sea serpent. I'm just doing simple colors. You don't have to do the same exact one as mine when I'm thinking of goldfish or the rainbow goldfish. Where it comes in like four colors, what is it? Red, orange, green, and blue, and purple. So you can do that. And I know you may have not seen, because I didn't ink my wave lines, because the reason is. So um, I'm keeping this kind of a light blue. I'm going to go with a darker blue here. This is slightly darker. So I'm just outlining here. There's my waves. You know, just carefully color those areas and it'll look like that. You know, um, this traditional, that's going to be a little tough for you guys. But if you have like a white gel pen or uh, paint, you can do something like this. Even with paint, that could work. Like a acrylic paint or a tempera. And I'm just going to add some little wavy lines here. Maybe a little bit lighter. No, that's that's the power there when doing uh, digital is that you can kind of add the colors on top. But it's basically kind of the same way as doing acrylic. The only thing is is that you'll have to um, wait for the paint to dry until you add in another color. Because if let's just say 
he just painted these rocks gray. And all of a sudden, like, wait, I'm gonna add these. Well, it's gonna mix with that gray if it's not dry. So you have to have some patience and let that paint dry. And it's the same thing with watercolor, too. Gotta let it dry and be patient. It's the same with inking. Gotta have patience with it. But that's pretty much our sea serpent. Now, there's no shading, if you notice, so um, if you want to add shading to your sea serpent, you are more than welcome to do that. So, I'm doing the usual clipping mask layer, adding my blending mode to multiply and 50%. So, for those who are doing um, traditional, I go with using darker tones that kind of suit closer to the colors of the sea serpent. So with me, I am going to do blue. And, oops, sorry, it's, this guy is getting darker shades of color by just using that single color. The, the way that you would think of it with um, doing layers, so it's basically kind of like paint, except, um, oops, um, pretend you're adding like a, a clear sheet on top and you're just coloring with a, a marker and kind of it's a little transparent so it kind of phases over this next drawing it's kind of like that I'm just shading on certain layers not too much And if you're doing, if you did a horn, so you know, so I did it kind of like at the edge here. Do some little bits of shading here. Kind of gives a nice touch with the texture. And I'm just doing a little shading on the teeth here. Well, that's totally optional. I know if people who have drawn it on paper and let's just say your teeth are a little too small for you to focus on shading, then you don't have to worry about that. Now another thing with shading is that you could also use a darker color to do more scales. So that's from here, that's one nice touch. And I'm just gonna shade shading areas. Just miss it because here and there, some little, some little areas, so nothing too fancy. It's not extreme dramatic lighting. Yeah, I'm, I'm just doing simple shades and. Uh, you could do like a little shading here on the little underbelly lines. That would give a nice touch too for the detail. You know, if you wonder, like, okay, well, what about the fish? Do we need shading? You could do some shading, but I feel that because the fish are a little far away and they're small, you don't need it too much. So it's totally up to you. I'm mainly focusing on my, uh, my sea serpent. I 
I'm just doing a little show like this because my sea serpent is kind of flipping over, so there's going to be some areas that looks a little dark. Kind of just this side here. Some bull's tail. Here. I'm just gonna add a little extra belly shadow here. Just why not? And it's got enough shadows going on here. And now, um, so here's another thing, like if you didn't add those details, so I'm doing like with my shadings, add that, and because it's a darker color, it gives a more finer little detail to it. And you can add shading in the eyes if you want, like this, but it's optional for you. But yeah, that my sea serpent is pretty much well shaded. Um, I'm just going to add some little bits of shading on the rocks here and there. Because they're up close to us, so that would probably be a nice touch to add. So you can do that. So you got your rocks and your sea serpent. And I'm just doing extra things, so I'm adding some lighting, and I typically use a lighter color under a screen lighting mode. And if you're doing, so again, if you have colored your dragon a lighter color, I mean, not dragon, sea serpent, um, lighter color, I'd say outline those highlights with a pencil lightly first. And let yourself know, okay, those are the areas I'm not going to color. I'm going to leave there for highlights, or for a lighter color. And I'm just doing a little bit of highlights, not too much. You can do that just a bit on the scales too. And I'll get more variety to you know, the scales have some shadows and some shine to it. And I'd say that's pretty important for any scaly sort of creature. Because they do shine from the from sunlight or any sort of light source in general. But that is our sea serpent under the sea. I'm not gonna sing the song. But you guys can too. I mean you guys could. 
same if you want. But that's how you draw a sea serpent and adding a full detailed background with some color along with knowing how to do some shading and lighting. Uh, I hope you guys had a fun time doing the seed serpent with me and 